Hello and welcome to a short discussion on cost behavior. Cost behavior is generally described as fixed, variable, or mixed. After viewing this video, you will be able to describe the behavior of a variable cost, a fixed cost, and a mixed cost. You will also learn to use the high-low method to separate fixed and variable parts of a mixed cost. You will be able to describe discretionary, opportunity, committed, and sunk cost. Total variable costs change when volume changes. Making more products increases total variable cost. Making less products reduces total variable cost. The cost per unit does not change. Direct material and direct labor are always variable cost. Each time a unit of product is made, more direct materials and more direct labor is used. Variable costs are incurred when a unit of product is made or sold. A variable cost is the same for each unit made. In this example, direct labor cost of $2.10 each time a pillow is made. The quantity of pillows made multiplied by the variable cost per unit equals the total variable cost. As the number of pillows increases, total cost of direct labor increases proportionately. The cost for one pillow does not change. Fixed costs behave opposite of variable cost. The total amount of fixed cost does not change as volume changes as long as the quantity of production remains in the relevant range. The relevant range is the range of the number of products that can be produced or sold without increasing or decreasing fixed cost. When the total remains the same and the volume changes, the cost per unit will change proportionately. Here's an example of a fixed cost. The rent for the manufacturing facility is $100,000 regardless of how many products are made. This cost is incurred as time passes. The cost per pillow when 100,000 pillows are made is a dollar per pillow. The cost per pillow decreases when more pillows are made. Making 200,000 pillows, twice as many, reduces the cost per pillow by a half. Total fixed costs do not change because the volume of products change. This does not mean that a fixed cost will not be different than expected. It just means that the fixed cost will not change because volume changes. Let's talk a little more about the relevant range. The assumption that the total fixed cost will not change when volume changes is only valid when the range of activity is within the relevant range. The relevant range indicates the minimum and the maximum volume of products that can be made without changing the fixed cost. In this example, the relevant range is between 500,000 and 1 million units produced. When the volume drops below 500,000 units, the company can reduce their fixed cost by moving to a smaller facility, employing fewer salespeople, or reducing administrative support. When the volume exceeds the relevant range, the company must expand and increase fixed costs to support the higher volume of products made and sold. There are times when a cost does not stay the same in total and also does not stay the same per unit when volume changes. These costs are mixed costs. A portion of the cost is fixed and a portion of the cost is variable. As volume increases, the total variable part of the cost increases, increasing the total cost. A good example of a mixed cost is machine maintenance where some maintenance is done routinely and some maintenance is done when the machine breaks down. In this example, the company plans to spend $200 each month in routine maintenance and then also estimates it will cost $0.04 cents for each unit produced when the machine breaks down. Water and sanitation is another example of a mixed cost. The city bills a set amount and additional amounts for each gallon used over the set amount. Fixed cost and variable cost must be separated in order to do analysis. The high-low method is used to separate the fixed and variable parts of a mixed cost. Two data points are required to separate out the fixed and variable cost. The formula of dollars divided by units gives the variable cost per unit. <coughs> Excuse me. 
The variable cost per unit is then used to estimate the total variable cost. The total mixed cost less the total variable cost equals the amount of fixed cost in the mixed cost. Total variable cost will change and total fixed cost will not change when the quantity changes. Here's an example of utilities that is a mixed cost. The total cost does not stay the same and the cost per unit changes as the volume changes. <coughs> This is how you know it's a mixed cost. The high-low formula will be used to compute the variable cost per unit. The high and low quantity is selected first and is placed below the line. The dollars associated with the quantity in the same month is placed on top of the line. It is very important that you do not just select the highest and lowest dollar amounts. The high and low quantity and the amounts must be for the same months. The variable cost per unit is computed by the formula and this is used to compute the total variable cost. The cost per unit can either be multiplied by the high quantity or the low quantity, either one. You do not have to do both. This example shows you both so you can see that the fixed cost is the same when using the high or the low quantity. The computed total variable cost is subtracted from the total mixed cost to determine the fixed cost. A cost formula can be used to estimate the total mixed cost for any volume of activity. In this case, the total mixed cost is expected to be $400 plus 20 cents for each unit produced. Let's spend a little time discussing other terminology used to describe cost. An opportunity cost is a situation where a decision is made and a benefit is not received. An opportunity cost is not really a cost. It is a revenue that is not earned because of a decision that is made. The name of an opportunity cost causes confusion. Just remember that it is revenue that is not earned because another approach is taken. A good example of an opportunity cost is a student going to college and the amount of money they could have earned they don't get because they attend college. Another example is using additional warehouse space because the rent income that you can't collect because you're using the space is an opportunity cost. Discretionary costs are costs that management can choose to incur or not to incur. They are short-term decisions that can be easily changed in the future. Examples of discretionary costs are training, travel, or replacing furniture. Committed costs are a result of decisions made for longer than one year that are very costly and difficult to change in the future. These costs must be incurred for a company to operate according to plan. Changing committed costs will impact the long-term goals and operations of the company. Examples of a committed cost are critical employee salaries, rent utilities and insurance on the facility, and equipment depreciation to make the product. A sunk cost is a cost that has been incurred that cannot be recovered if a different decision is made. A change can be made, however, the cost will not be recovered. Tuition for this semester that is already paid that won't be refunded if the class is dropped is a sunk cost. Also, the cost of a machine that cannot be used for any other purpose is also a sunk cost. Just a quick review. Fixed costs do not change in total because volume changes. The cost per unit will change as volume changes. Variable costs change in total as volume changes because the cost for one unit remains the same. Mixed costs contain some fixed costs and some variable costs. The high-low method is used to separate the fixed cost and the variable cost of the mixed cost. To determine if a cost is a variable or a fixed cost, ask if the total cost will change when one more unit of product is made or sold. If the total cost changes with each unit, it is a variable cost. If the total cost does not change when one more unit is made or sold, it's a fixed cost. 
Anything in between is a mixed cost. Sometimes a mixed cost behaves mostly like a variable cost or a fixed cost. In this case, the cost is classified according to the behavior it is most like. It is not cost effective to use the high-low method for every mixed cost. Remember that total fixed cost will not change because you make or sell one more unit. And total variable cost will change when you make or sell one more unit. Now that you have viewed this video, you should be able to describe the behavior of a variable cost, a fixed cost, and a mixed cost. You should be able to use the high-low method to separate fixed and variable parts of a mixed cost and describe discretionary, opportunity, committed, and sunk cost. Please log on to studymyaccounting.com. The practices you learn will give you examples in practice with each of the concepts discussed in this video. Work the practice test to verify your understanding. Write the answers out and check your answers to the answers provided. Please write it out. It will help you really get it. Thank you for being prepared for class. It is much appreciated.